So, continuing, still on the data link layer, with uh, network topologies, and we're going to talk about rings, um, and token rings, and token passing. Now, uh, Fiverr Distributed Data Interface is uh, more of a, a wide area network standard, um, as opposed to token ring, which is IEEE 802.5, um, and that's a, a local area network protocol. But both are token passing methods, and, and both essentially use a logical ring design. Um, now, token passing um, is well how do you how do you implement this um, in a a network what what is a token and and you know what do you do with it well typically a token is simply a bit in the framing of a packet for token passing networks generally speaking uh, although it's not absolutely required but generally speaking you have a fixed packet size um, I mean you definitely have a finite packet size but you know uh, and and maybe a maximum size but uh, generally speaking it's it's fixed um, makes things easier um, now it doesn't matter necessarily what the size of the packet is you don't have to worry about whether or not the data physically traversing the media is, uh, you know, whether the entire packet is going to be contained within a given segment of the network media. Because the, uh, the token, um, well, the, the, the packet, all the data in the packet um, is being uh, read and regenerated. You remember that I said that it's, it's simplex. It doesn't simply pass through. It has to be read by a receiver and then um, it is copied and, and sent on its way around the ring. Uh, so that it goes through everybody until it gets back to the originator and the originator uh, which knows that it has the token that it um, uh, is the one that sent this packet of data um, then uh, well I mean in, in the first place it, it grabbed that token simply by flipping that bit um, you know, saying that this is this is not an available packet. This is now a packet carrying data to an address. And of course, you know, all the framing has to do with the uh, the addressing. And addressing, of course, is at the network layer. So we're not going to talk about that here. Um, but the uh, you know the addressing is is put on there. The the origin, the destination. And of course, this one bit um, has been flipped, and and that is all the token is 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 the flipping of this bit. Um, it's not something that is taken up, uh, that is held. Um, it doesn't have to be some cryptographically protected number, um, as with uh, you know digital currencies or anything like that. Um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be digitally signed. It's just a bit. Um, because we are assuming that everybody is going to use the protocol properly. Now, you know, we'll uh, get into issues as to, you know, what happens when you do not use uh, the protocol properly. When, when you uh, take liberties with it, when you, you know deliberately mess things up, whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, for now, uh, we will assume that everybody uh, understands this and they just, you know, when they see a zero, for example, uh, that means that the packet is available. 
and so they flip that bit to one, which indicates this packet is in use, and they start putting their data into the packet. Uh, that traverses the ring. It is read by all nodes on the ring, read and regenerated at each node. That's the way the uh, ring system works. And if it is addressed to the device attached to that node, then the information is passed to that node. If it's not, uh, then it's simply regenerated and forgotten. Uh, so, um, that is, that's the way that it works. That, that is what a token is. Uh, that's how a token get pa gets passed. Um, the, uh, Ethernet, in, in comparison to Ethernet, um, just, you know, well, there's, there's a number of factors, but one of the factors is that um, there is actually no guarantee of uh, delivery or even a time that you can speak on an Ethernet network. If it is very busy, um, it is quite possible for uh, extended periods and indefinite periods of time to go by before somebody is able to uh, make any kind of a broadcast. Um, on Token Ring, there is a, a fixed and determined maximum time before you will have an opportunity to send a message. And uh, because of that, you, you can plan. And, you know, generally speaking, the, the time is, you know, on the order of uh, microseconds. Um, but uh, in any case, you, you can build into the applications uh, the fact that there is going to be a, a maximum time before you can send a message. Or, you know, before um, you can send a message, it can get around the ring, and whoever you sent the message to will have been able to find a space to make a response. So, you know, that kind of uh, uh, determination is available with Token Ring as opposed to Ethernet. Um, okay. Um, it gives you predictable bandwidths. Um, it, uh, uh, you know, it's... Now, it's, it's a more expensive uh, technology. Um, and, as I say, you know, these days... Uh, people are, are using uh, Wi-Fi um, uh, with higher uh, overall speeds, but uh, a much less efficient mechanism. But, you know, nobody particularly cares because it's much easier uh, to do Wi-Fi rather than to set up the cabling and media assignments necessary to set up uh, a wired network and and particularly a token passing network <laughs>